welcome to another episode of the WHOA TV Podcast, coming to you from Gainesville, Florida. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the WHOA GNV Podcast. I am beyond excited about this episode because we have Vinny Fiorello, the drummer, lyricist, and founding member of one of my favorite bands, Less Than Jake, right here in the house today. Vinny, what is up, man? How are you? I'm doing great, great. A, a little jet lagged. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still getting used to this time zone, but hey, <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. Because where, you know? where were you? You were in Europe? Uh, y- Europe for a few weeks, South America for a few weeks, <laughs> West Coast for a week. It's good stuff. I can't even imagine. <laughs> like, oh, what time zone am I in right now? Yeah, there's um, no such thing as time zones, it's just day or night at this point. Well, I'm not going to lie to anybody in the room. I 100% driving over here this morning was listening to Gainesville Rock City on repeat <laughs> just to get hyped nice. for this, man. Nice. I am like so pumped that you're here. Um, but Ty, like, dude, you got to give us uh, updates. Like, what's going on in Best of Gainesville world? What's What's happening? Right yeah. now, right now it's August technically. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> um, we did our fifth weekly podcast yesterday, and I got my first real uh, message from someone that listened to the podcast, and it was from the owner of If It Is Thai and Sushi Bar Downtown, and uh, it was pretty cool. Reached out, said he listened to the podcast. I gave a, I guess I gave a review. Um, my review for all places usually is I want it as spicy as possible, and I just want to be put down just once and no one's done it, but they said they're gonna give it another try. The food was great, um, but it was pretty cool that the podcast made an impact on a new downtown business. They invited me to come in, and uh, I'm excited to see where it where it goes. And this is the mini pod that you're talking about? Or? The mini pod, yeah, yeah, the little, I think this week's is gonna be like six minutes, so Dude, it's super short. It's so cool that, to see like what the podcasting that, that you're doing on Best of Gainesville that we're doing here has been doing in the community. I was blown away when Bryn had told us that she had reached out to Natel, who was on the podcast, yep. and like that collaboration started. Actually, I would really like to know if you're listening to the podcast or you're watching on video. Definitely like hit us up. Just just email me. You can for now. You can just email me, Colin at nsfrl.com or uh, Best of Gainesville at yep. gmail.com, right? Yep. Perfect. Um, and and let us know if like you've collaborated or connected with somebody who's been on the podcast because uh, you know that would. I mean, for me, that's like a whole, the purpose, right? And if I, that's just gonna fuel me. That's gonna, you know, that's just gonna pump me up yeah. even more to know that it's like doing that and working. So, Definitely. and that's um, how that's how I met Vinny. Um, we were gonna promote the Wonderland tattoo, which we'll get into. He's a co-owner of Wonderland Tattoo downtown. But we we're gonna promote the one year anniversary and also their Wake and Bake Festival, which is their local festival um, that they do once a year in Gainesville. So pretty cool. That was off of Instagram. Yeah. So it's uh, I'm always interested to see how people, you know, first collaborate with each other here locally. Yeah. It's really awesome. Cool. cool. Hey, Vinny, man, yep. we always like to start with the origin stories. I'm sure this is probably something that you have probably gotten <laughs> sick and tired of telling over the years. Right. Uh, but for like the small group of people who might not know who you are <laughs> or might not know who Less Than Jake is, can you like give us a give us your little origin story? What brought you to Gainesville, like, or were you born and raised here? Absolutely not. Okay. You know? So yeah, yeah. the crazy thing about Gainesville is that you know you have the ACRs, and that's a small population of people that have grown up here, lived here for a long time, and continue to live here. What's ACR uh, stand for for this? For uh, a few Lacho, people, Alachua <laughs> County yeah. resident. I'm, I'm I know we've I'm, we've referred we've referred yeah. to that before, yeah. and I was like, oh, we've never unpacked that. Yeah. <laughs> people the, might not know what that means. The ACRs. So I'm not an ACR. I lived in New Jersey until I was 16, when I moved down to uh, Port Charlotte, Florida, which is about three hours south of here. That's where I met Chris. Chris is the guitar player and the singer for Less Than Jake, one of the singers for Less Than Jake. And uh, we went to high school together. We started a couple punk bands. He moved up to the university and I followed it a little bit later. So the weird thing about Less Than Jake, I think, is that uh, it's uh, transplants. We're, We're all transplants into Gainesville. Raj, the bass player and singer, he's from uh, Miami. Uh, Buddy's from uh, Palm Beach. Uh, He's uh, the trombone player. I'm originally from New Jersey, but moved down to South Florida, then back up to Gainesville. Chris is from Port Charlotte, where I met him. So we're all transplants into Gainesville. But, you know, 26 years in of living in Gainesville, 27 years in of living in Gainesville, I mean, I'm 
pretty much an ACR as you can get. <laughs> right, currently, I'm, I'm right? getting to that point yeah. too because my first my first 18 years were moving all around the country, mm-hmm. like bou- in the world, really bouncing around as a military family, and then my second 18 years have been right here, yeah. <laughs> and uh, now it's definitely home. You know, it, it's crazy because you talk to people, and it's the college that usually draws people to Gainesville, or it did, right? And uh, I think the face of Gainesville is changing now a little bit just with the tech companies that are moving in and a lot of other sort of uh, businesses that are coming in. Uh, that's the reason to move to Gainesville for some people. For you know me, 20 whatever years ago, it was just the university because the university is this you know sort of a blue dot in this red sea that's sort of floating here and it's a magnet for people that, to come if you're in that area you know of living in the 100 miles out Gainesville's the big city you come here the college is here everything's here so <laughs> right uh, you know with Les and Jake we just you know started as a punk band was you know? it while you were in school oh, or absolutely was, yeah you know and it, it's funny now I'm back in school to finish off like three classes that I needed to do. Uh, <laughs> That's so for, great. For, yeah, so uh, it, it's a it's a weird 360, but you know, when we first started, you know, there was no real, there was hardback cafe to play, but you know, most of the time it was just, you know, we were out in a warehouse that we shared with a bunch of other bands and we kind of bashed out some songs and then we hoped to play a house party. And Gainesville was famous for his house parties, you know, 20 whatever years ago. and. Bands would show up, and you would play, have a couple hundred people in your backyard, and kind of get wild and, and get weird until the cops came, and then, you know, you dispersed. Uh, <laughs> and those are the first shows. Yeah, just house abso- parties. Absolutely, because there was uh, an all age show in Gainesville was unheard of. So the only all age show that could happen really was either at the Hardback Cafe, which is where. Uh, Boca Fiesta is now, currently, if you didn't know that. Uh, and uh, it was just, you show up at houses, you set up your gear in the living room or the backyard, and you have a couple kegs, and, <laughs> and you know, people show up. You know, you have the, the college kids that would show up, ACRs that would show up, and that kind of mix it up. And that was the first, literally, Less Than Jake shows were in the student ghetto. Like, is that even called the student ghetto anymore? Where I have no idea. I think it, so. I still refer to it as a student <laughs> ghetto, but I don't know if that's a. It, it's not that's right. Correct. Like some people are shaking their heads, like, like oh, no, it's yeah. not it. But that's you know uh, behind the post office over by campus. Yeah. That whole neighborhood was called the student ghetto. Yeah. I guess it's just and midtown building now. Back there now. Is yeah. it midtown? It's now? Just, midtown. just midtown. Yeah, I live in midtown. I guess yeah. that sounds you know, a little not, bit better. Not, not to like <laughs> not to like cut up Gainesville into this weird thing, but let's talk about the midtown thing for a second. When someone's like. I never go downtown. I only stay in Midtown. And I was like, what, what? are you talking about? <laughs> like, I could walk Gainesville in an afternoon from one side to the other. Like, oh, so you're telling me you're only staying in this, like, four-block radius of Midtown. But I didn't even understand what Midtown was the first couple times. People were like, yeah, we're going to go to Midtown. And we're, I'm like, I don't even know. What's Midtown to you? And it's like, yeah. oh, it's just by the campus. Yeah. It has this and this. I'm like, that's Midtown, really? And, so, and that's what? something Vinny and I have talked about before through like best of Gainesville people have learned places downtown like Boca Fiesta and just things that you yeah things that we take for granted being either ACRs or transplant ACRs Mm -hmm. and it's uh it's always amazing that people don't maybe understand how cool Gainesville can be and um you know it's cool that their tattoo shops downtown they're starting to bring people down there downtown's starting to come back a little bit even with the Celebration Point, Shop Butler, Midtown areas also building. But I think the new build outs of the apartment complexes, even though they're high rises and a little bit different than Gainesville, at least they're moving towards downtown. So it's opening up that kind of area for, for new thoughts and, and new places, which is, which is fun. Yeah, so what was the first venue that you played? Hardback Cafe. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you said that. And the cover dish, which is, uh, the high dive, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, currently, where that that resides. Cool thing about the covered dish, if anyone remembers, uh, there was a pit in front of the stage. So underneath, where if you're standing in front of the stage at a high dive, uh, that whole underneath you, there's still a hollow floor that you can rip out, and there's the pit that was in there, like a four foot rectangle that you sort of, you know, herded people into, and then above kind of hovered, you know. So it was this weird, like faux balcony that wasn't really a balcony but you know it's yeah. uh, two levels and it was fun uh, you know it was it was fun to do shows when it was a cover dish bill bryson who owns madrina's 
Crane, co-owner of Crane, he owned Covered Dish. So brought a lot of good music in, supported Less Than Jake early on. So, uh, you know, if band would come in from out of town, let's say this band from Miami Quit, which was a pop punk band that was kind of famous in the 90s, right? And, uh, you know, he would go, hey, Less Than Jake, we want to come do this, you can open up for the show. And that's cool. At, at that time, it was good to be able to cut your teeth on something that was not a house show and not like some weird warehouse show where you're you're sweating it out and uh bill bill's great for for supporting less than jake you know alan who still owns the hardback the new hardback but he owned it back then too uh alan bushnell uh he supported less than jake and he supported the local punk rock scene for a uh, decades you know uh, as far as i'm aware uh and i i tip the hat to people who can recognize, oh yeah, I, I have to sort of support this fledgling thing. Maybe they don't understand it, maybe they do. I, I don't know if they did at the time, but they, they supported Less Than Jake and they supported uh, the people that were surrounding Less Than Jake and other bands at that time, which the, was cool. The one thing that I know, like Ty and I are 100% on the same page <laughs> with this, is that like we love your passion for Gainesville. I mean, it's just reflect. I mean, it's reflected in like title titles of songs, oh, the, yeah, the, ly the lyrics. I mean, hell, on the Instagram it says Gainesville, Florida. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, I mean, so do our shirts. We got them all from Lucy's. Thanks, Dan. I mean, you have titles of albums that you know, G and V F O. I mean, just like there's just so much of Gainesville yeah. in Less Than Jake, and like where where I just see some people. I mean, where where some people kind of get embarrassed about where they come from. You know, like. That's not you guys yeah. at all. Like, what is it about Gainesville that just that fuels the lyrics and and the passion behind what you do? It, it, it's just the, embracing what you have, you know. And and you sort of hit the nail on the head. You know, some people are like, well, kind of, well, Gainesville or uh, it's college town. I can't wait to get out and go somewhere else. Well, to be honest with you, somewhere else is really the same. I, I've. I've literally have gone around this globe, and this not like some humble brag, but you know we've been around for twenty, you know, six years as a band. I've toured around the globe so many times, and Gainesville not only home, and you have that roots there, right? But it's so similar to so many other places. So when someone goes, "Oh, Gainesville such a drag. There's nothing to do, and there's you know." it's boring or whatever it is, I, I kind of go, then you don't know Gainesville. You don't, you haven't lived it. You haven't embraced it. And uh, to answer your question and, and not try to be long winded about it, uh, I, I love the roots factor of it. Uh, not only in Gainesville, but anywhere, you know, New Jersey. Yeah. I grew up in New Jersey. That was 16 years. That was awesome to live there. And the same thing for it goes for Gainesville. I have really good memories here and my roots are here. So anytime you can call a place home, that's 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 great to embrace it because I know a lot of people who go, oh, where are you from? Well, I'm kind of, uh, I lived here a little bit and I lived there a little bit with my parents and, yeah. and they're not passionate about it. I love everything about Gainesville. I love what it was and I love what it's becoming. And that's a cool thing to say about the, the town that you live in. Yeah, so tell, tell me more about band stuff. Because, like, I'm always interested in, I mean, I, I like 100% want to get to the business stuff too, because that's fascinating to me, of course. Um, but look, when was when was the first show when you went, you know, from opening for another band to, hey, headliner now, like, you know, this it, is the it, moment. But, was, but it was weird because it, it's not like that, right? And, and what it, being in a punk rock, you got to remember, it's a punk rock band, you know, and if, if Ken Block was sitting next to me, he would tell a different story, you know, about that Sister Hazel for anyone, right? Yeah. So he would tell a different story about, uh, you know, going from opener to a headliner. Less than Jake, it was playing house parties and then playing like with a group of other bands at, let's say, a covered dish that were like minded. But it wasn't until we started to go out of town. You know, Daytona was one of our like sort of weekend shows. It was Black Eyed Susan that that was uh, the club that said, yeah, come down and play with these other ska punk bands. And we would go down for the weekend and we would go through the Ocala Forest and drive there and, you know, bash it out and then come. And then you started to see more people come every time that we were there. 
and you go, oh, and that's, like, that's cool, well, right? They're coming to see us. And, <laughs> but it, it wasn't it wasn't until we were on our first U.S. tour, and it was a summer tour. It was 48 days that we booked ourselves, right? So we would call everyone. Some shows would fall through. Some shows it would be in some kids' uh, garage at his parents' house that we would show up and it would be like, like... Five people? Or my, yeah, have you ever had one of those been, moments? So, yeah, of course. You know, we, There's been moments in... It was the first tour. It was in Wilmington, uh, North Carolina. It was the band playing to the bartender and then the door person. And yeah. that was it. See, I can relate. I don't know if you know this. Like, I was in, a, it, ironically, a ska punk band while I was in college here at the University of Florida. Nice. It, was <laughs> called, it, it was called 1013 Concepts. Mm-hmm. And then we, like, it got rebranded to T13C. And, and they got on, like, after after my days, like, when I started getting into business and stuff, they were on um, America's Got Talent. And that, you know, they, they kind of, I mean, it was cool. It was cool. But I remember, I mean, like, let's make sure that we're being very, like down here. This <laughs> less than Jake, like, <laughs> you know. Like, there, there's obvi- there's obviously no comparison. But like, I played trumpet, and um, hey, man, I just like I remember going to you know you'd have those early shows, and like there'd be three people there, and you would just play your heart out. <laughs> you know what Absolutely. I mean? And uh, and I there's something about. And I, I still get like this today when I do like speaking engagements because I like I like to go speak to groups and talk about like our core values, ultimate customer experience, like a business stuff now. So it's the same, but it's a, it's different. Like that adrenaline rush oh, yeah. when you are on stage, man, it feels so good, <laughs> you know. And I I really do miss it, but at least I still get a taste of it just in a different capacity. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We're gonna have to see you in action. So. <laughs> Dude, there's like, give Vinny, let, give him a oh, chance man. to review you. Br- br- bring the trumpet out, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's do some stuff. It's been a while, <laughs> it's been a while. Um, you know, it, it, it's crazy, but I'll, I'll go with what you're saying. It's That first tour, it, it's a crapshoot. You know, you show up and there's three people, but it doesn't matter. You're on tour and you're going crazy. And yeah. You're just like playing and going, and you, and you get off stage and you know, sometimes you're bummed and sometimes you're just wishing for gas money or a place to stay, floor to sleep on. But it wasn't until we got to the Northeast and the Midwest that 500 kids would show up. There'd be 500 kids in this weird, you know, uh, Masonic temple place where they have like catered dinners or their whatever, their award show. We're playing there and there's 500 kids. Elks Lodge in New Jersey, there's 700 kids. Metro, which was a big club in Chicago, there's 1,200 kids. You go, what's going on? This is crazy. <laughs> like, how is this? But it, it made everybody in the band go, well, there's something going on. Like, we have to continue with it. And usually you have a band in college and you it's that brief blip on the radar that you go, okay, now I have to go find a real job and now I have to like graduate and move on from where we're at and then uh, the band's over with, and let's, you move on to real life, and, and there it is. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second, because I think a lot of people, I mean, whether it's, I mean, just just in general, they have a passion, yeah, right? They have a passion, and like music is obviously like a passion for a lot of people, and um, it's y'all's passion. Like, I mean, when when do you know it's time to throw in the towel? It's just not working. Like, I mean, you know, yeah. and. It's hard. It's hard because I I've known people that it was the eleventh hour of being in a band, and all of a sudden the tide started to turn and went, oh, and and then followed that and then it became popular. There's no real formula. There's no real like uh, tick mark to go. It's time to throw in the towel uh, because if you have passion for it, you have passion for it. You can't turn that off. You have to continue on it. Maybe you're not making ends me if you want to talk about that finance side of it, that you have to go do something else. But guess what? It's uh, In Less Than Jake, it's Raj worked for Knuckleheads, which was a head shop that was in town for a while. Uh, Chris worked for Gumby's Pizza, delivering pizza. Yes. I put up you know uh, flyers for local clubs. I'd be out at like two o'clock in the morning, we pasting and stapling flyers, like hanging out with homeless people. Like that, that's what I did for money because was, we weren't making money at the time. It was just, we'd come home for tour and we'd go back to our jobs and go, okay, two weeks or three weeks later, okay, we have to leave again. And, and it wasn't until, you know, later that, you know, 
a, a few years into being a professional band that you started to make money and didn't have to have a job. But we were lucky in that. It, it's much harder these days to be in a new band trying to break out than it was in the 90s. And I'm not saying we had to walk 10 miles or you know that, that cliche thing. <laughs> but uh, back then it, it was if you were working hard and you were making contacts, it, it, it made sense to continue. You felt that magnetic pull forward. And to go back and answer what you're saying is that if you're doing what you love to do and you start to feel this forward momentum, and, and it's undeniable, I'm sure you felt it, I know that you felt it before, Ty. If you start to feel this forward momentum, you're doing something right. Even if it's just a little bit and you go, oh, I, f I feel that. And it starts to push you or propel you forward or, or pull you forward, whatever it is. When that starts to happen, you know you're doing something good. And maybe the money's not there right now, but if you're feeling that, the money will follow. Was, like, there, was there ever a time where like, you felt like you were close to just being like, man, this is not working, you know, or like, were you ever at the bottom hundreds, of the hundreds, hill? Hundreds of times. Yeah. Hundreds, yeah. And, and but, what did you do to get yourself out of it? Like to shake it off and be like, no, you know what? Like, this is what I love. This is what, like, I'm gonna do this. I've got this. It, it's just hard work. Yeah. It's just hard work. It's when you're at the lowest point is when you have to work the hardest. And, and that's the, the, the basis of anything in life. You know, it's just not music, it's, it's, you know, it's owning your own company. When you're at the lowest point, it's not the point where you go, you raise your hands and just go, eh, eh, I, I'm done with this. When you're at the lowest point is when you go, okay, now I have to get my shit together. And you have to go harder at that. When you're at the lowest point, it, it, that means to me when I'm at the lowest point is that I'm not working hard enough and that I have to get up and go do more and more often and more passionately. And, and that's facts, that works for, for music and punk rock and uh, the whole do-it-yourself aspect of it. No one's gonna do it for you. You have to, I don't know how to silk screen shirts back in the 90s. Well, guess what? We learned how to silk screen shirts and we were in our apartment silk screening shirts because we couldn't afford someone else uh, to do it for us, yeah. so we did it. We didn't have anyone to take us on as a client at that time to book shows. So we booked shows, we called and we did all those things. And you, ha you have to learn how to do that. It doesn't matter if it's music, it doesn't matter if you're owning your own company, whatever that is, right? If no one's doing it for you, you have to learn how to do it. If you're at the lowest point, you have to go, what can I do to pull myself out of this lowest point? No one's going to pull you out. I, and I, I, I hate to say that, there's no lifeline in real life. The only lifeline that you have is what you're doing yourself. And, and, that, and it, it's, it's funny because people go, oh, it's a music, ska punk, it's lighthearted. But when you're talking about paying rent or having gas for the van to get from Chicago to Milwaukee, or someone's worrying about, oh, at that time we have to we need more t-shirts because we have to sell more t-shirts to make more money. And no one's throwing a lifeline to you. You at that time, even in our early 20s, we were looking around going, it's just us, we, we have to do it. And in real life, besides the band, uh, it's just you. You know, maybe you can rely on your business partner or your brother, right? And my brothers are in less than Jake. So you, you go look around and go, oh, well, you have to do this, figure out how we're gonna fix the van. I'll call somebody on the payphone to see if our show's happening too, and it was a payphone, mind you, right? There was no cell phone <laughs> right. at the time. And uh, you, ha you have to do those things, and at the lowest point is when you, go you don't give up, and, and that's cliche to say, but at the lowest point, you figure out a way how to get yourself out. I and, love that. And when the finish line is, no one could tell you what the finish line is until there's the finish line. But uh, I looked around plenty of times and said, band's done. I, I, we can't do it anymore. Uh, it's at a dead end, whether it's we lost a label and what are we gonna do? Or the show was terrible or, or whatever it is. Been at that lowest point so many times in my life, but it, 
it, it's not the time at that point to go, well, we throw in the towel and we just walk away and it will be the better for it. As long as you have passion and you're loving what you do, other things will follow in the wake of you pushing forward. Did the other businesses, like, so, I mean, we, I, I'm texting back and forth with Ty because I'm like, I mean, I, it's easy enough to introduce you as the drummer of Less Than Jake, but I'm like, man, this guy, like, serial entrepreneur. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah. I mean, just, we, we could have kept going with your intro this morning, right? I mean, did those Andy, other businesses. Andy writes, Andy writes all the songs. Yeah, I mean, I, I said that. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just amazing. I, I do lyrics, so yeah, there's, yes. there's a huge difference on that, right? So well, I do the lyrics, my, my brother's in Less Than Jake, the music side of it, and I, I've said it to other people before, and maybe Ty, but, for me, I, I'm blessed the fact that there's other people that can put the words that I'm writing and how I'm feeling and lock it into a musical feeling that I can't do. So it's really like uh, the other guys on Less Than Jake, it, it's being a, a voice for the voiceless. I can't sing, you know? And I can fumble with some like melody and I can fumble my way through other things, but having someone who understands music, understands how to put a song together better than I can, that's a, a beautiful thing. And blessed is a weird word to say, and I'm never comfortable to say that, but I do feel blessed to have that sort of other arm, just to make that like sort of like clear. But like, yeah. it, the, the other side of it, I've always liked the business side of being in a band. I always liked the creative side of being in a band. I've always liked the visual side of being in a band. And there's only some, there's only so much you could do in the parameter without like sort of beating people into submission. Uh, you can't always do it for one thing. So what I found with Less Than Jake, I wanted to do more shirts, more toys, more, more of everything, more releases. And I just couldn't continue to do that just in the Less Than Jake box. Okay, did, I, I had to move out of that box. So there's, that started other business. Okay, we're, I guess where I'm like thinking is did, or I'm, what I'm asking is, did those things come out of just another passion for those things or did it come because, I mean, like there is that early struggle of when of you're course. getting a band off, like you're, you know, you're, you're like asking fans for gas money to, to get, you know, Absolutely. like, like, like I get that. Um, did, were these like to help kind of supplement, like offset? that bring revenue in from other streams in order to do it? They were just other passions? Oh, just other passions, yeah. you know? And uh, again, you have to go back to what, Les and Jake and myself, we were brought up in uh, punk community and that, that ethos of that punk community was doing it yourself, right? So you wanna, make a, you wanna be in a magazine? Okay, make, a, make your own magazine. If no one wants to talk to you, okay, cool, you do your own podcast. And then you can talk to everybody. Right. You know, you don't know how to do a T-shirt. Learn how to screen print because it's available to you. And that that's where I came from. And I continue. Okay, I I want to release a record from another band. I saw this band on tour with Less Than Jake. I I, I want to help that band. You know, as Less Than Jake was getting bigger, and you ran into a band that was back, you know, a year and a half before you were at that point. Uh, and you go, oh, they played in front of three people, but they're so great. I want to do something for that. I want to release that music. I want to, oh, look at this toy. I did this cool toy for Less Than Jake, but now I want to do it with the characters that I see in my head. And and it, you start, and, and I most certainly did, you start to form ideas about wanting more of one thing. And if it doesn't fit in that box, you have to jump out of that box and, and start from the ground up again, you know? So I do toys, uh, uh, Wonderland is, is the, the moniker, Monkey versus Robot, what it started as, and then uh, Wonderland, after Wonderland War after that. And then uh, uh, started Fuel by Ramen, which was first record label. And then, you know, Paper and Plastic after that, Wonderland Tattoo after that, and it's just those things come naturally because they come from places that I love. Is it hard managing all like all the different Absolutely. aspects of it? Like do you really have to delegate to, to other people to take those things yeah, on? Or, I mean, cause you're, or, cause you're on tour a lot. Like you're about to start the Vans yeah. Warp Tour. Actually, I wore my Vans just for you, just for that. <laughs> I, got, I got, did you see those these? Those are pretty good. I, yeah, know, I mean, I got, I I got my uh, superhero yeah, Marvel, nice. Marvel Vans on. 
but you have to delegate, uh, but at certain points in time too, because they're uh, create a lot of them are creative uh, businesses. You could put them on hold when things are getting mm -hmm. too busy and go. Okay, I'm not going to release records. I'm not going to release a comic book. I'm not going to do X, Y, Z. Uh, Wonderland. I have a partner, Eric, and. I'm lucky enough, again, to be in business with someone who, in the field of tattooing, he, he's on the upper tier. And he understands and is equally passionate about what we're trying to do at Wonderland, which is bringing sort of Gainesville, we're bringing low art into Gainesville, bringing toys into Gainesville. And that's not something that really, it was in Gainesville one time. It was with Store 101, which was uh, diagonal from the top there was a store that sold like kid robot little like dunnies and, and you know interesting sort of art shirts and things like that. But uh, Gainesville doesn't really have that except for a few places that sell like little tchotchke toys, whether it be at the bookstore or wherever. Uh, so when Eric first came up, he was from South Florida and started tattooing myself and a few other people. He would come up on the weekend. Uh, and we started talking and go, Gainesville's missing this. Gainesville's not missing tattoo shops. There's plenty of tattoo shops in Gainesville. But what Gainesville, I thought, was missing was a, play, a, a creative hub, an artistic hub for low art and uh, vinyl toys and designer toys and things like that. And that's what Wonderland, besides being a tattoo shop, is, is aiming for. But to, to sort of circle back around on, on the original question, it's that all these things come from passions that that stemmed before Less Than Jake, yeah. but Less Than Jake allowed me some opportunity to do other things, but it all starts at that passion. If you don't have passion for doing it, uh, I, I don't know what you would do. I, uh, there's a friend who I know that his passion is to make money. So it's not the business that he's actually passionate in, it's making money that he's passionate in. So he has the ability to go, well, it's a sprocket company. I just bought it. I don't care about sprockets, but I care about that I just made, you know, a quarter of a million dollars on buying it and then I'm selling it three months later. I made a quarter of a million dollars. What's up? That's that's what I want, right? And I tip of the hat to him because I get invested personally. I get uh, that that passion is for the things. It's not for necessarily the outcome. Sure. Right. So, but I, I don't want to talk it too much into into submission. It's just that if you love what you do, the the things behind it get in line, and it opens other opportunities up if you're paying attention. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, like I can relate. I mean, we've talked about it before about even this place, New Scooters for Less. I mean, I just saw an opportunity because I was the kid who couldn't get on on a bus to go to yeah, school. You, have, you know, UF is just has all these parking issues. I'm like, man, like, you know, Scooters found me. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I was just trying to solve a problem and jumped in, and I knew, and I knew I wasn't going to work for anybody. Yeah. You know, I had just realized that I was not meant to work for somebody else, and yeah. and then the the thought of working for my myself, living on my own terms, doing doing what I want to do each day, being you know the the journey. I actually like the money. I mean, the money is isn't my purpose at all. It's yeah. definitely the 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 journey and the joy and the just just the impact, yeah, I mean, just impact. being able to have an impact like we've had on Gainesville um, from, a, from a scooter standpoint. <laughs> like putting, yeah. You know, like, you know, and hopefully this, you know, has a huge impact on Gainesville. I mean, it, that's that's what fuels me, yeah. you know? So I can, I can relate. Yeah, absolutely. I can yeah, definitely, definitely relate. And I think, you know, Vinny's even taken it one step further that he's created these places to showcase his passions you know, they're successful and he's also put them into the place he loves, you know, Gainesville, and he put them downtown, which is really cool. Um, and if you haven't been to Wonderland, it's located kind of just west, right behind the Hippodrome in the Sun Center next to Boca Fiesta. And uh, I don't have any tattoos, but I've probably been in there a dozen times. I've taken a couple of my buddies to get their first tattoo. I'm like, I got, I got, the, I got the place for you. And it's, uh, you know, I don't know if he would agree. It's kind of like a boutique. It's really, it's really nice. Um, 
it's super clean you know the artwork is amazing i mean it's such a cool place and the guys are the guys are super cool and then uh paper and plastic which is the how would you exactly refer to paper and plastic uh, how do, you know what it, it started out as a record label second record label yeah after at, fueled by ramen after fueled yep. by ramen but it, it slowly morphed into a toy company yeah, because uh, I do more toys than records currently. But okay. uh, it's anything that I could fit under the umbrella of creative output for yep. myself. So it's art prints, it's comic books, it's vinyl records. Uh, it's doing things for myself, but it's also doing other things for other bands and other artists that I respect and that I I, I love what they're doing and yeah. love their output. So. I don't know, paper and plastic is a very a weird thing. It's, a, it's just a creative hub. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which and is, it's located by the new fire station downtown, kind of right behind Tamal. Right behind. And Tamal. I guess so. Under that, you would say those Gainesville Adventure patches, which yep. you've seen on Best of Gainesville. You can buy them at Wonderland. You can buy them at Bat Wonder. Houses, uh, Lechua Trail. Really, really cool. Some of Best of Gainesville's most popular posts. That's awesome. Um, and then the best keychain. You know, maybe yeah. in the world, it's a Gainesville versus everybody keychain. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's the best it's glow in the dark. Um, it's really really cool. That's sweet. Yeah. Hey, I want to ask some more uh, like band questions. <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> there's like so, there's like things that are like fascinating to me that I. You mind if I cycle up one? <laughs> I want to yeah, just yeah, get yeah. to one thing. So yeah, do it. Um, I'm not a musical person at all. Um, get I, out. I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. I don't know anything. Um, my girlfriend was a cello major. Her brother. Everyone else is music except me. I'm a golfer and some other stuff. But uh, <laughs> one of the weird things is even being from Gainesville, I'd heard of Less Than Jake, and you know I'd heard some of their stuff, um, but. I have English cousins, and one of my cousins, his name is Ben, he's 27, he was in a band, a couple really popular bands in England, and he told me, um, when we I started working with Vinny a little bit, he told me that one of his band, one of his favorite bands in the world is Less Than Jake, and I was like, yeah, I, I know the drummer, <laughs> like they're from Gainesville, and it blew his mind. And I just kind of wanted to cycle up to you know, from all the struggles and the creation in Gainesville to the bus trips from Milwaukee to who knows where, you know, you guys are world famous now, you know, and you travel all over the world. And uh, I just wanted you to touch on maybe a couple places that are super interesting to you or a couple festivals that, you know, someone that is musically inclined that likes to go do these things. You know, Gainesville is such a musical town yeah. and there's so many festivals now. What's kind of a hidden place in the world, a hidden festival in the world, something that's so unique that you guys have had an opportunity to play in or something you really would like to? Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, a, it's okay, well, the, the one thing that I'm gonna have to say, there's no such thing as like a hidden festival because a festival by its nature is, you know, thousands of people, right? Yeah. So I'll go with that, some of the highlights of Less Than Jake around the world festival. So we played, uh, Fuji Rock Festival in Japan, uh, which the cool thing about that, it's at the base of Mount Fuji, which is a very iconic sort of, uh, uh, in Japan, the landscape of it. If you go anywhere on the bullet train, you look, there's this huge ass mountain that's right there, right? So uh, we played at the base of Mount Fuji and the forest that's at that base of it. And it, it, it was a mind blower. You know, because you're in there, you're you're not only, Japan's one of my most favorite places in the world to go. Just because the people that are on that island, it's so compact, but so, I don't know, it's a, they're generous, man. Like, Japanese people, when you're there, you feel the, it, it might be chaotic in Tokyo, it may be crazy, maybe, you know, 10,000 people on the street sharing that street with you, but, it's never obtrusive. It's never like yeah. There's a this, crazy level of respect, right? There's a, it's did, respect. It's weird. Very. Did you see cool. the stuff with the World Cup? You know, they they had lost the round in the World Cup, and yeah. they had like spotlessly cleaned the locker room and left a thank you note, like in Russian, yeah. like in in the place. And they were talking about how their fans were cleaning up the like the stadium Absolutely. after the end of the game. I mean, like just yeah. this level of respect. So I think I mean that's yeah. That, you know, so you have that uh, Fuji Rock Festival. It was great, 
you That's know, so we cool. had like a 4,000 person circle pit, you know, that was more like a jog than anything because of, of how big it was. But Fuji Rock Festival, that's great. Uh, Reading Festival in England, that's another one. That was the first time that Les and Jake got on stage that I, w I was visibly shaken by how big it was. It was the, when you're sitting on stage and you're looking, it, people touch the horizon line of when you're looking at it. You know, it was 80,000 wow. plus people that are in front of you and shake it by it, where you're just out there playing and having 20,000 people, it's Gainesville Rock City. There's a video online, if you go look on YouTube, it's less than Jake playing Reading Festival, but it's Gainesville Rock City where the middle part, where the chant of Gainesville Rock City, there's, it's 20, and it's not an exaggeration, 20,000 people just bouncing up and down to that part of the song. Yeah. It's a mind blower. And you get off that stage at that time and you hover. That's how amazing it was, that connection. And, uh, so Reading <laughs> Festival yeah. is, is another Sweet. one. And then, you know, uh, there was a new festival that was happening. It was Punk and Drublick, which was with Fat Mike from No Effects. And that was happening in the United States. And then we did some shows a few weeks ago over in Europe for that. And the reason why I bring that up is just because when you get to play with friends that are in other bands, like I'll, I'll put in perspective, we were in Milan, Italy, and we played with every band except for one that we played with that day were friends of ours. So to be able to be in the middle of another country and surrounded by friends that you've played multiple shows with and back from the United States, it's just it's it's a very cool thing to have that that moment where you're standing there going I'm surrounded by friends but we're in Milan Italy there's 5000 people there in, in front of us and it was great uh, to go with other festivals you're talking about uh, the up in Montreal uh, there's uh, Montebello Rock Fest right it is another one and they have it, it's very weird how they have it cut so Motley Crue, Marilyn Manson could be playing on one stage, and then you have <laughs> Less Than Jake and Real Big Fish and Pennywise and Rancid playing over on this other thing. So it's this mix of weird metal and hardcore and punk rock, but it works. And it's, in my opinion, one of, of my favorite, it's one of my favorite places to play, which is in Montreal, just because the energy is amazing with the people that go see music. but. It's just a really cool festival to be able to play next to these other types of bands. So, Are you allowed to play favorites? Like, do you have a favorite band that you tour with or a favorite band that you listen to? Uh, yeah, but it's usually not the same. Yeah. So, uh, favorite band that we tour with, uh, Real Big Fish, is because they're very similar in style as we are, and they've been friends for a very long time. So, it's it's... Not necessarily favorite, but it's easy. It's yeah. like touring with family or touring with best friends. It's just an easy thing to do. There's no drama, there's nothing weird, and you just sort of go with that. Uh, as far as like uh, play favorites music-wise, it just always, uh, I don't know if anyone in this room, if it's like this for anyone, but I don't really have a favorite band. It, I have a favorite band at the time and then it sort of recedes, and then this other thing that comes up and kind of goes in cycles like that. I listen to a lot of reggae music, listen to a lot of uh, rap right now, uh, just because I think that rap music uh, in the politically charged time, and I don't want to go into politics realm of it, but in the, the sort of politically charged time that we're living in, rap music for me and punk music, they're, they're the only things that are touching on these sort of nerves to make people react, to make mm. people want to talk about it, to initiate change. And uh, some people would, would disagree with me going, oh, rap's about, you know, you know sort of materialism or sort of gender bias. Or, or, But there's a whole other section of rap music that is not that. It, it's about talking about injustice and that's going on. And, and again, I don't want to go there, but Rap music is one of the things that propels me. Kendrick Lamar, if you haven't listened to his last record, it's, it's, it's a great record, it's damn. I mean, if everyone by now should have Spotify or Apple Music, you can easily go dial it up and, and, and 
you know, just even just pick any track of that record and it's great, you know. I think uh, you're, I mean music is We're uh, living in the, the golden age of listening music. Yeah. If you're not if you're not listening to music just in a casual way, you're missing out because it's ten dollars a month, it's unlimited, you can cherry pick anything. You go, Oh, I remember listening to whatever, Journey, you know, uh, I want to listen to it again. You yeah. don't have to go buy a $12 CD. You go, I want to listen to Journey Open Arms right now. Yeah, and so get much fun. Be epic, right? Like, You'd be like, hey, Alexa, play Less Than Jake, Gainesville Rock City. <laughs> oh, she had played the playlist instead. <laughs> yeah, but I, lo- like, I, lo- I love that. Yeah, Alexa, good. off. You know, like, I love that you can just do that in, today, <laughs> in today's world. So if someone listens to the podcast for the first time and this mm-hmm. is their first opening ever hearing about Less Than Jake, what would you tell them to tell Alexa? What should be the three songs maybe Ooh, they should that's a cool question. Uh, listen to, to learn about you guys? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, Less Than Jake, top three songs from my standpoint would be uh, All My Best Friends Are Metalheads, it would be uh, Science of Selling Yourself Short, which just can't, had come on. And, uh, you know, I, I would point people to a new song, not because I think that like it's a very representative of what it was, but of what it is now, and that's Whatever the Weather, which is, uh, I, I, lyrically, and, and the only reason why I say Whatever the Weather and it's not to push a new song, push a new EP or anything like that. It's because I find that Lesson Jake lyrically for myself has gone from sort of uh, negative, not necessarily negative, but looking at the negative and kind of describing the negative. Now it's I sort of have turned the tide and start looking at a little bit more of the positive of of going. Yeah, things you may have this dark cloud, but the dark cloud passes. You may have this sort of, you know, current that's pulling you out, but that current also pushes you back in. And as you, I, I don't know if it's age thing. I don't know if it's about having, I have a, a, a young daughter. I don't know if it's about that necessarily, but there's a point that I turn the tide from being angry uh, in, in the punk rock sense, right? Like. I want to do this and I want to, you know, get this done and this is what's happening that's bad to looking at, oh, th- this is what's happening that's good and, and let's amplify the good. Is it like a glass half empty to a glass half full mentality? Absolutely. And I, I don't know where, I don't, and I don't necessarily know why that switched and, and when how that switch happened, but I just know that th- that looking over your shoulder all the time to go what happened and and the bad that that happened and, and to try to un, un, unravel it that way didn't work for me. It's so, probably just growth, just growth in so many di- different ways yeah, over the it, years. I mean, you know, there, there's, I, I always go with uh, this thing. There's a, uh, there's a certain amount when you're writing lyrics and, and you're being creative uh, art or anything, there's a certain amount that I'm channeling on a personal level to get demons out, right? And not to get heavy with it, but you know, it's it, you come from a long line of you know, it's like alcoholism or overwork. Like what, like my father and and his father before him and his father before him, they were all uh, workaholics. You know, they all went well. We're men, and we have to provide for our family. So it didn't matter if they worked sixty hours a week. They didn't realize that back then that overworking uh, wasn't as good as not having enough money for, to go on vacation, right? So at, at that point, you know, I, writing lyrics and things like that, I use lyrics and art in, in general to push out like why, and, and Rubik's Cube, why I did these things or why they did those things, not to get heavy, but yeah. like, it, you use that to channel, to sort of exercise the demons, to get those things out, you know? And well, that, I'm lucky enough to be able to to do that. Some people don't have that outlet. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, music is an incredible outlet, not even from you as like the producer, the creator, but even for people who who listen to it all the time. I mean, 
like you hear a song and you're instantly taken back to a moment 100%. in time. And and that is that's just the power, of, you know, of music. Um, like I there's one question I really want to get answered. Can I go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I I really want to know. Okay. Like what do you do when you get a headache? or you have a temperature of 103 and you have a show in 30 minutes. <laughs> like, that, has that ever happened? I mean, I've 100%. got to assume that Absolutely. that's happened and like how, what do you do well, to this? Different people handle it different ways, yeah. you know? Uh, it, and and a younger, in my younger days, it would be a different approach than it is now, right? So like, uh, to, now, if I have a bad day, or if I have a headache, or I hundred have a hundred and ten fever, I will just go, all right, and and leave the bus area and leave and kind of be by myself for like forty five minutes and talk my way through like the show and like this is what's going to happen and this and this and this and and talk away and get myself psyched up and and focused and then go out there and by the time I hit the stage. I've already gone through the show a half dozen times of how I'm gonna feel and what's gonna happen and there's gonna be a point where I hit the wall and I have to like go to, uh, in my younger days I would just go like, well, where's the Jägermeister? <laughs> and and we're, gonna, we're gonna drink that and then we're gonna hit the show like, and everything's gonna be fine and by the time the show happened, uh, it would be good, you know? Or even in my younger days before that, uh, we're, where's the chalice of coffee? We're gonna like drink as much coffee as possible. I'm gonna smoke more cigarettes than like half of Detroit, and then I'm gonna get on stage and everything's and gonna release. be great again. You know? Do you, Do you have a uh, like a pregame? You know, athletes they get they get their headphones in, they yeah. get like pumped up, the pregame mentality. Do you have any sort of routine I get, before? I, I, I do have a routine. You do? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, you know and. Uh, I'm ashamed to say this routine. <laughs> Please tell us. <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Uh, but so I, I don't do the, I changed two things about the routine, but some things stay the same. I've always, uh, I, I have to warm up because uh, playing punk rock music, the speed that it is, it's I sort of uh, the metaphor for it is like getting on a moving train. So when you come out of the gate, you already have to be there and, and you're playing that fast. So I warm up a lot, right? So you know, do stretches, warm up. I usually would do it on my shoe, like the bottom of my shoe. So legs crossed and just kind of warm up. And that's been two decades or more of that's, you know, just get into there and get into the head space, right? Uh, and that has stayed the same. Before, uh, I don't do it anymore. Uh, and I just stopped doing it. Uh, but I used to go, I, ha I have to pee before I play, right? <laughs> and then there's some times where you go, well, there's no place to pee. And so I, I would pee in a cup for the longest time. It would be decades of peeing in a cup. And, <laughs> and, and you leave there. So you have your drink. Uh, this is yeah. what the podcast is all about, people, so, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that before I play golf. Yeah, you, uh. You'd have your drink and you, right before you go on stage, you finish your drink and then I'd pee in a cup. But let me tell you the, the 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 weirdest thing that happened and go it's the second time that we played the Reading Festival, right? And we were on main stage and Lincoln Park was headlining. And I was like, I have to pee. And there was nowhere to pee. Right? And, and I was like, well, I gotta pee in a cup. So I snuck behind where Lincoln Park's uh, uh, cabinets for their guitar amps were and I'm like peeing, like a sneak pee, right? Like behind there. But I'm, 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 I'm looking at the crowd. The crowd is massive, tens of thousands of people. I'm peeing. Uh, but at the same time that I'm peeing, I look down and I see Lincoln Park set. And it was the weirdest thing for me because as I'm doing it, and there's a crowd that's right there, but I'm reading. It's like, uh, you know, here's the song list. But next to the song list were notes. And it was like, uh, Greet the crowd, say hi to Metallica, turn hat sideways and say whatever. So it was all these like prompts of big, like that big bands have that to remind them that, hey, talk about this or talk about that. But as I'm peeing and looking at their notes for the show and it was it, the moment that sort of hovered over me was like, what 
the world that I'm living in currently is the most like insane world possible where I'm looking at the notes for Lincoln Park, I'm looking at tens of thousands of people, but yet I'm I'm hiding peeing in a cup that was behind the thing. So uh, I, I stopped peeing in a cup, I don't do that anymore. Uh, well, that's good. Yeah, do you have like I, a, I find a bathroom, I have to find a bathroom. Do you have like a crazy fan story? Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, crazy fan story, uh, just even quick, it's happened a, a half dozen times where different people too, you're playing the show, then all of a sudden you see a person in a wheelchair uh, that's crowd surfing. <laughs> like in the head, they're, in the, they're in there and, and that. Uh, but in particular, there was this one time that we were playing, it was in Chicago, a person uh, was crowd surfing that was in a wheelchair, but uh, they took off their their uh, prosthetic leg and like held it up, like victory, like <laughs> held up a leg as they were like getting brought over the crowd. It was. It was wild. Oh my gosh. Um, we have to wrap up in a minute, but we always like to wrap up with just a quick answer Gainesville questions. All right. So my first question for you is, what's your favorite Gainesville restaurant? Favorite Gainesville restaurant right now, Daily Green. Cool. Cool. So it's a perfect weekend in Gainesville. You're not on tour. It's the fall. It's cool out. What do you What do you do? Where do you guys go? Uh, walk around downtown, play Pokemon with my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> and your daughter goes to Brentwood still currently. Yeah, Brentwood That's where school. I went. Yeah. So shout out Brentwood. Yeah, Brentwood. What's up? How old your daughter? She's six, turning seven in September. Okay, cool. Yeah. What, is, what does she think about like dad going on tour and? You know, it, it's tough sometimes because I'm uh, not there for some things, right? But since she was young, I would always tell her, it's like, dad's gonna leave, but dad always comes back. And that's an important thing when you're doing what, you know, you're being a dad and doing what I do, you have to tell kids, yeah, you know, dad's busy and dad's gonna be gone, but dad will always come back to, to what it is. It's important that it's just not this open-ended thing that as much as you're gonna leave, that's what you come back. So, but it also allows me when I'm home to be fully present yeah. with her, and that's that's cool. Very good. What's your favorite local beer? Mm, that's tough because <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of loyalty that goes both. I won't go with favorite beer. I'll go favorite place to drink beer, and that's Lucy's. Okay, that's fair. What do you think the most underrated aspect is of Gainesville? Underrated, I. You know what? I, I, if you asked me that maybe ten years ago, uh, I'd have an answer. I don't think Gainesville's underrated. I, what, I think. What would you tell someone if they were thinking, "Hey, I might go to school here. Hey, I might, I might bring my family and build a business here." What would you say is like the one piece of advice you would would give someone in that situation? I, I would think I would. If someone said, "Hey, I'm thinking about moving to Gainesville," I would tell them, "Well, at if you're moving to Gainesville, you have to, to learn how to sort of hit the neutral thing. You have to slow down enough to take in everything that Gainesville has to offer. You can't come to Gainesville and expect to be in this sort of fast paced thing and, and take in that. Gainesville's not that place. Gainesville is a place where if you slow down enough, you go to the springs and you relax and you go out and you know walk around the campus and you do those things. And if you take that in, Gainesville has great art, great food, great bands. No, not no, thank to Lost and Jake. But besides that, great music that's here and always had a great music scene. So if you slow down enough to pay attention to what's going on, then Gainesville's going to be a great place to live and great place to grow. And Gainesville's growing. I mean, we all know it. It's it's good to have new blood come in, and by nature, Gainesville's about new blood. It's about college kids that come in, they have some ideas, and they leave a trace, and then they leave town, right? But there's a cool thing that's happening now where sort of keeping the talent in Gainesville, that, that's the idea, right? And that's people coming in with new businesses and, and making a home here that's not just a, a transition home. 
what does it cost me to have a less than Jake show right here in the parking lot on 13th Street? <laughs> right here in the middle of Gainesville. I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> it, it, could, uh, it, it could be free or it could be, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. There you go. <laughs> um, and then last, I've got one. We'll probably have to edit this out. But uh, what do you think it's going to take for Gainesville to rewrite their slogan from where nature and culture meet? to Gainesville f- in Florida, because that's how I feel about it, you know? That's the tagline that gets us that gets us out there. Yeah, you I, know, yeah, you know I, let's talk to someone. Who do we have to talk to about yeah. that? Uh, well, let's, we'll, let's, we'll let's figure it out. Let's just start a movement, right? Yeah, yeah. we'll figure it out. Let, let's talk it out, I'd love to have that happen. Yeah. Um, if you have, like, we need to wrap up the podcast. I would love to, I'm maybe do a couple more questions after the podcast, yeah. just do a little, little side hustle. We do a little after program called the side hustle so if you want to see the side hustle um check it out the next day um but yeah just tell tell the fans where we can uh when i say the next day the day after this podcast check it out on facebook whoa gnv podcast page um but where can we where can everybody find you less than jake.com at less than jake on all social media there. Awesome. Vinny, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you for being a part of what makes Gainesville so glorious. Give our love Thanks to the, me. give our love to the other guys. I Good luck with tour. And um man, I'm just I'm just super grateful that you're here. No, so, it, so thank it you. It was great. Thanks for so, having me. And everybody, thank you so much for listening to another episode of the WHOA GNV podcast, the podcast bringing you businesses and individuals that make it go, whoa. We will see you later. <laughs> Bye. See you.